living below in this old sinful world. Hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation so. Tell me where could I go but to the Lord? <laughs> Neighbors are kind, I love them, everyone. We get about all of that raggy that raggedy we call that rag church <laughs> that rag church this is uh from uh james b coates mm. great rendition remind me of my old kojic days Ooh, to the we see you in 60. Show that 
will get you thinking and where the topics are hot. Feel free to comment whether we agree or not, cause he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones Jones. Come on in. The water's fine. Do 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 do. Hi. Hello, my soul. So on the show. Show I'm here. It is the evening edition. Baby. How y'all is? Come on in. The water's fine. Water's fine. Water's fine. I'm reading the comments and I'm cracking up here. I'm cracking up. Uh, Valencia, who who said that? <laughs> Somebody said, uh, Yvonne said, I feel like a little girl swing my legs. <laughs> Lord, the bunker people. Sounding straight Baptist, sir. Just need the quartet. Come on, Valinda. I told y'all. Oh, class last night. Hey, Amen. Man, I tell you, the bunker people showed up last night. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Charlie Milam, are you, are you here? I think I saw you. The Bunker family showed up in form. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. Uh, for those of you who don't understand, uh, we're doing a Sunday school university on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. And the Bunker family overtook the room. <laughs> they overtook the room. It was truly, truly amazing and great to see y'all. <laughs> y'all took over the room. Uh-huh. Man, listen. Charlie. Charlie. Oh, my God. J-Red. Come on, Tim. And matter of fact, I think I saw your homework. I think I saw your homework. Bless you, Timothy Johnson. Thank you for the super chat. I ain't even said that. And he's already blessing me. Wow. Uh, J-Red sent, sent his uh, homework. I think D Lynn sent her homework. Um, yeah, a couple of people they emailed their homeworks. All right, all right. I'm gonna check them out tonight. Okay, man. But last night's class was amazing, right? Come on, Melody. We had a packed parking lot. It was so packed. Ooh, it took us. It took us at least thirty minutes for folks to get out of the parking lot. <laughs> oh man, it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. Beverly Williams. God, girl, let me tell you. Amen. Yes, Ruth Chester, you you actually supposed to email me your your homework. <laughs> you you supposed to have done that. All right. So I can't wait for next week. It's gonna be great. So tonight, I'd like to know from y'all that you did you get the did you did you answer the questions I gave y'all five last night. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You really were supposed to email it to me. And so that I could read it on the line and see who got it right, who got it wrong. All right. So um, maybe that part wasn't understood. <laughs> um, but each week I, I need you all to uh, email me the answers to the questions. All right. And um, I will. I grade papers, by the way. Yes, I does. I grade those papers. OK, so today uh, um, is. Um, um, is uh, like a like a, a, a debriefing for Wednesday night's Bible study. All right, and no, it's not too late for those of some of you who still want to get into the classes. You can still email me at giftedfriends the number one at gmail dot com. Giftedfriends the number one at gmail dot com. You have to put Bunker Family in the description. You must. You must. Or sorry, can't get in. Bunker Family in the description okay in the subject line that is and then in the email tell me who are you where are you coming from facebook what's your name on facebook or i see you dinah dinah got her i see the email all right i saw it okay uh let's see 
Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I guess the directions was misconstrued. <laughs> I know. It was misconstrued. Now, Beverly asked a question here. I thought we were uh, sending it on Sunday. Uh, no, that's for Faith Temple, folks. No. That's for Faith Temple only, folks. But you all, I want y'all's before Sunday. All right? So email it to me, your, the answer to the five questions, and so I can grade the papers, and then we can move on. All right. Uh, so what do we do now? Um, um, some of you can ask questions right now, or we can get into the subject matter. The, 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 the topic of the show here is called... Nancy Johnson, blessing to you. I see your, your email here. Uh, what's the show called? Today is called The Importance of Bible Study. For those of you who are watching this later on in life and you're like, why is it taking this man uh, all these minutes to get to the lesson? It's because the show is live and I'm talking to my family. And if you if you want to join the family, it's free. <laughs> you join the family and you'll understand what we're doing. Okay, so unfortunately you had to fast forward to this point, part to get to the lesson of t the night called in the importance of Bible study. Well, of course you wouldn't have known to fast forward to that point. So yeah, all that jazz. Uh, a fan didn't write down the questions. Shame, shame on you. You get an incomplete in class. <laughs> you didn't write down the questions. You get an incomplete. Um, and so as far as the questions is concerned, Rogers, are you there? Uh, would you put the five questions on the, on the in the comment sections, please? That would be great. Okay, I want to read this whole thing about the importance of the Bible study, as y'all can see last night, how important it was. All right, how important it was for to have a Bible study as such. All right, uh, because there's some there's a lot of people who hit me up and says they had never learned the scriptures that way. I didn't either coming up and yesterday was something, but next week was going to be worse. <laughs> it's going to be worse. Um, where do we find the video? Ruth Chester, didn't we, didn't we not talk? <laughs> didn't we not talk in the, in the text message? <laughs> do your husband know that you could sometimes be impatient? <laughs> did we not, did, did we not, did we not, didn't I not say I'd be sending you the video, the replay from last night? <laughs> Put your husband on the phone right quick. Put him on. This this him on is this him on the phone? I'm not, I'm not even gonna do the bit right now. Amen. Uh, somebody had a question. Uh, what what your thoughts on succubus and incubus? Are there any scripture to prove that? Uh, is it uh, through a uh, Troy Alfred? Great question. No. Um, there are a lot of things that we do. Um, or we we've studied, we've practiced, we've heard. Some of it is. Oh, wives' tales. The, the Paul talks about wives' tales, doctrines of devils, uh, Madea passed down from a family member, uh, 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 maybe some Jewish uh, story like uh, Lilith and Adam is a story that people believe, but Lilith is is folklore. It's not. Uh, he didn't. He wasn't married to Lilith. He was married to Eve, but people, you know, believe that stuff. So succubus and incubus is a concept that one is male and one is female as it as they tend to uh, enter into your dreams and take over, you know, your conscious and all these things. And so we have to be careful with those type of tales when we are not in the scriptures, then we are in our flesh. <laughs> OK, so great question. <laughs> Ruth said, me no understand English. <laughs> What's wrong with that woman? Uh, okay, so here are the questions. Number one, give me four translations. All right, give me four translations from last night. Number two, give me a brief synopsis on what is a canon. Number three, there are three heavens and what are their names? Number four, give me at least three translations that was written prior to the King James authorized version. And number five, when did the canon of scripture end? What year did the canon of scripture end? And when, pretty much when was the book closed? Mm -hmm. Y'all got that? All right. You're welcome, Johnson. All right. Okay. 
But this thing on the importance of the scriptures, uh, this article says here, understanding the scripture is important because the Bible is God's word. When we open the Bible, we read God's message to us. What could be more important than understanding what the creator of the universe has to say to us? I see you, Pitts. All right. I see your email. They're coming in. I'll be, I'll be grading them tonight. What does the scripture say to us? All right, here was the real question. When are we getting together, my brother? Yes, yeah, Smart Christian Channel. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, because I, uh, I would like to um, spearhead a, um, a Zoom meeting for us, the Bunker family. All right. I think we should do that in the next couple of weeks. What do y'all think? Okay. I'd like to spearhead that, and then it would be a monthly meeting uh, uh, with, uh, with us so we can talk, get to know each other, and then plan some, some visits, some trips maybe to one of y'all's town. And, you know, I think we should because we are a church. We're a family, but we are a church. All right, so I think we should we should do that in the next couple of weeks. All right, let's let's plan that. It's just us, so that we all can talk and have a voice, and we can introduce each other one by one, and we can find out who was that had had all that echo going on last night. Who was that had the echo going on? Was it was it was it Balam? Was it John? Who had all that echo going on? <laughs> Troy just sent me an email. Mm hmm. Just Troy, that's it. Uh, didn't you send me one? Yeah, just send me an email. Mm hmm. You did, Alfred. You sent me an email. Oh, you you in the bunker. <laughs> you you already there. I'll be sending you some stuff. Uh when do we break to the core what? When do we break it to core uh oh that the the moon landing <laughs> what what <laughs> Oh man Corey, get me, put me on the show, man. So I can put you on my show. I watch you all the time. I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, how to be over 70 years old person. What? Oh, oh it had to be a 70. <laughs> Linda Ivy, you didn't get your, you, you must didn't, you must not send it to the right person. So send me one right now. Linda Ivy, send me an email. Gifted friends, the number one. At gmail.com. Send me an email. Put Bunker Family in the subject matter. Will you please? Okay. Uh, so it's all about God's word. Mm -hmm. Linda and we. Okay. All right. All right. I see something there. All right. Homework. We seek understanding of the Bible for the same reason a man seeks understanding uh, a love letter from his sweetheart. I see you, Linda Falk. Mm-hmm. God loves us and desires to restore our relationship to him. God communicates his love to us in the Bible. Y'all understand that? He communicates his love to us through his word. It is a love letter from the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm getting your info now and we'll contact you either tomorrow or Saturday. Awesome. Smart Christian. Thank you, sir. I'm looking forward to it, man. But we can do a lot of damage. <laughs> you already doing damage. I'm just a cute, nice little boy in the, in the bunker. Minding my own business. You out there, man, doing stuff. And I just if I just sit at your feet and be blessed. I need the questions about canon. Hopefully spelling is right. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Holla. Send me an email. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> we brothers. <laughs> yeah, I watch some of his stuff and I say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, he, he, he been in my notes or I been in his notes. I think we sharing notes. The Bible is a love letter. If you don't understand that, you will never understand the scriptures. Please understand that. Mm -hmm. Who writes a love letter to their lover and not sit back in anticipation for an answer to the love letter? Mm -hmm. Come on, smart. Of course, we, we share the same daddy. Who does that? And who is the recipient of a love letter and not open the letter and read it? Hmm? Who does that? Seem like we do. I see you guys watching. I see the email. Mm hmm. Who does that? We do. I was so excited when I was dating and when I was a teenager and the love letters came from my girlfriend. I could not wait. 
It was so beautiful. It was the the moment of just opening the letters. Back then, there was no email. There was no cell phones. Couldn't text. We couldn't um, FaceTime. No, you had to put, you had to sit there and write a letter. And then you had to, you got to, if there ain't no stamps at the house, you had to go to the post office or the currency exchange and get a stamp. And then you had to address the, the letter, the envelope, put the stamp on it, seal it, and then walk physically to your neighborhood box. And then you open the box, you kiss the letter. That's my ritual. You kiss the letter. Sometimes a girl will spray some cologne on it. You put it in the box, you close the door, and then you open the door. Can y'all tell me why? <laughs> Can y'all tell me why? Linda Ivy, uh, uh, Linda, um, is your email Linda and we weep, weep, be something? Is that you? Uh, that would that uh, would maybe when we don't know the sender. Yeah. Oh, uh, Pat, Pat, are you preaching? You preaching already? Uh, can you go over the difference again? The translation and interpretation so important to know. Difference. Uh, uh, Alice Mitchell asked a great question here. Absolutely. To translate is to take what I see here and move it over, word for word. Move it over to my language. That's translation. Interpretation is seeing what I see here and explaining to y'all what I see. Does that make sense? So there's pros and cons to both of them, but there's more cons to the interpretation because the interpretation is what I think it says. The interpretation then becomes what you think it says. Interpretation can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Janice, I see you. Nesmith, I see you. Mm hmm. Trinisha Late, mm hmm. Black Panda, I see you. Mm hmm. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Hey, Amen. Michelle Carter's here. She's here. She's here. Uh, to refuse to read a love letter from someone means you don't value or appreciate that person. Come on, Troy. Troy. Mm hmm. Thank you. Interpretation can then become eisegetical. Yes. Yes. All right, so we uh, open the um, mailbox and then we put the letter in and then we close the mailbox and then we open the mailbox again to look for what, y'all? Can you tell me? I'm waiting on that answer. Y'all ain't answer me. Yeah, y'all didn't answer me. That's important. That's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't respond or open it because you don't love them back. Doug, Doug, Doug. <laughs> yes. Doug, he comes over here and drop bombs. <laughs> huh? Tell me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't think y'all getting it. You have the letter in your hand. And you put the letter in that mailbox that's on the street. Thank you, Ruth. You making sure that that letter dropped in there, even though they designed the mailbox to fall. Mm -hmm. You open it again to make sure it went down in there. You don't understand. Mm -hmm. Come, on, Jackie, Jackie. We come to the Lord, and He will. Jackie, Jackie Jackson. You in my, you in my notes. You in my mental notes. Come on, you you caught that thing. I threw it, and <laughs> you caught it. Uh huh. You look down the hatch to ensure not uh, that it's not stuck. Mm hmm. Yo, boy, I tell you, but Jackie got it. <laughs> All right. You want to make sure that it gets to the sender. Me too, Ruth. Sometimes I look twice. Boop, boop, to make sure I need that letter to get to the sender. I need my lover to read it. Mm -hmm. You got OCD. You need to do that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Okay. Yes. All right. Triska asked a great question. Great question. Can somebody tell me what is transliteration? We're going to talk about that next week. 
What is trans? Literally, the 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 Q, the clue, is in the first part. What is transliteration? Tell me, somebody. Mm -hmm. I take directly to the post office. Come on, girl. Come on. I like that. The worst part is not that you didn't read it. It's that you read it and didn't even acknowledge what was written. You just read it and put it down. Ooh! Y'all preaching. Wow. That's hot. <laughs> yeah. Stan said, Sir Walter Corey and Richard Hughes is the three kings. He <laughs> said, stop. That's pretty good, though. I, I'm, I'm humbled. Mm -hmm. All right. What is transliteration? Can somebody tell me? Truth says trans, transliteration is the process of transferring a word from the alphabet of one language to another. Okay. I need a little bit more than that. But yeah, generally, yes, transliteration deals with the swapping Greek letters and words and replacing them with letters from our current alphabet to come up with the meaning. You understand? So how important is transliteration? Mm -hmm. How important is that then? God is the door. Linda Ivy, come on. I see Angela Fraser's homework, Eleanor Collins' homework. Deborah Jones, all right, hmm, helps in pronunciation, mm-hmm, choices transliteration is taking trans translation of a translating rather than translating the word, yes, yes, uh, interpretation is playing a, uh, a game of telephone and is skewed based on our life, ex yeah, that's good, David, pretty good, I see you, Mark Smith, good stuff, they're coming in, changing the words, of literature yes mm -hmm. so that's good so the importance of uh, studying the Bible number one is about the love letter okay let's see also we seek understanding of the of Bible for the same reason a soldier seeks the understanding of a dispatch from his commander Obeying God's commands brings honor to him and guides us in the way of life Psalms 119 those commands are found in the Bible. If you are in an army, Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, okay, the National Guard or something, you must adhere to the commands by those superiors or you could what? Can y'all tell me? Mm -hmm. Come on, Dinah. How else can we know how to keep our way pure. Can you tell me, if you do not um, agree with the commands of your superior officer, what could happen to you? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me? Can you tell me hmm? what could happen to you? Two things can happen to you. And those two things are why it's so important to understand the word of God. Hmm? Hmm? And print it. Hey, uh, we don't, we don't uh, get it. Okay, the army, yeah. Now, truth says, court-martial. Good. Dinah says, discipline or death. Yes. Jail or discharge. Yes. Yes. Court-martial, discharge. That's right. That's the scriptures. God has given us commandments, and the commandments are through his son, Jesus Christ. He says, obey my commandments. He says, because when you're messing around with the world, he says that you are adulterers, adulterers. That's what Christ is saying. You are adulterers. You are messing around in the Russian army. How are you living in Ukraine and, and trying to fight in the Russian army, you're supposed to be fighting against the Russian, not with them. You are an adulterer, and that's what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about in the spiritual sense, not so much the natural sense. So you will be court-martialed. <laughs> but if you don't obey a command from your superior in war, you could die. Mm -hmm. So you will get a dishonorable discharge. Come on, Michelle, come on. You got to sit in the penalty box. <laughs> you can get in. You can get injured. 
Oh man, I see you. Uh, who was this? Williams, I see you. Patricia Sharp, I see you. Y'all are y'all are y'all are top heavy tonight. Top to the heavy. All right. What else? What else is there? Mm, we seek understanding in the Bible for the same reason that a, a mechanic seeks to understand a repair manual. Things go wrong in this world, and the Bible not only diagnoses the problem, which is sin, but also points out the solution, which is faith in God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right? So a mechanic seeks to understand a repair manual. Who gives a broken car to a man who has not studied it? Who don't know the schematics of the engine. He could do a worse job to your car. Than when you brought it in. A doctor who don't know medicine. Once you go to see him. You go in there with a toe ache. But you go out in a body bag. You understand? So every item that you buy. Especially if it's mechanical. Uh, usually comes with a manual on how to operate or maybe what's called troubleshoot. So the Bible is full of troubleshooting instructions just in case we break. I don't think y'all getting it. Antibody getting this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you just saw my in the email. Sorry, if things <laughs> big easy. Mm -hmm. Deborah Pratter, I see you. Is it Prater? Uh, here's another quick question. Will you explain when it when it says the books of the Bible are contemporary of each other? Contemporary of each other. You got to help me further with that one, Tresca, please. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, chapter you put out the army, but Jesus doesn't boot. Oh, what? 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 Mercy and grace. Come. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Humphrey. That good stuff. That good stuff. That, that, that good stuff right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good one. I am so late. <laughs> you are, TJ. Uh huh. Malachi is a contemporary of. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. There are. Con my th mm. I, um, I, I have a. I have a. I was just looking at it last night. I have a book here where you can tell who is a contemporary of who. Because as it pertains to the four Gospels, uh, you got a, a couple of those guys are contemporaries of another guy. Okay, long story. We, we, we can talk about that next week. We can, if you want to. I like the, the B-I-B-L-E acronym, basic instructions before leaving the earth. Come on, Black Panda. I used to open up my Ask the Elder show with that. If you go to my podcast... On Spreaker.com, I open my show with this. The B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me on Thursday nights. All right? Go to podcast, the So Walter Jones Show, and you every Thursday, you'll you'll hear that rant. So, great memory of Black Panda. All right, what's next? All right? Somebody is updating me with the questions. ta da -tia. Can you answer the question that the lady asked about Cain and his sisters marrying Leah and the sisters? Uh, about Cain and and his sisters marrying Leah and the sisters. I don't know. I don't understand the second part, but the first part is Cain did indeed marry his sister. Oh, that definitely was allowed. Uh, um, that was that was absolutely allowed. Had to be because God only made one man, Adam. And at the time, he only had he he gave birth to two children and then eventually he gave ch um, birth to several more children but at that time there was just Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel and then after Cain and Abel came his other children and then you know but we look at that as this all happening within a week a month or something like that. Man listen they could have been a couple hundred years <laughs> Oh, she asked the question uh, the other day and you saved it for the are you talking about Leah? Oh yeah, we can answer that one, uh, San, about if is Zilpa and somebody related. Is that the one you're talking about? A very important question. I recently discovered it in Matthew. There was two different genealogies of Jesus. 
uh, can you explain it? Uh, Troy, uh, two, 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 two. oh, Matthew and Luke is not two different genealogies of Jesus. Uh, the genealogy of Jesus uh, uh, in Matthew leads you to Jesus being qualified. Oh, man, I'm going too soon because that is weak. Go to your syllabus. <laughs> Go to your syllabus. Because if I tell y'all, that's going to be on the test. Troy Alfred, that's going to be on the test. Go to your syllabus. And go to week um, where I talk about the Gospels. What week is that? Week seven. Yeah, that's week seven. <laughs> that's week seven. You about to? I was about to mess up. Matter of fact, let me circle that one because I was about to mess up answering Troy's question. He was he was about to mess me up. <laughs> All right. We'll be answering that one week seven. Okay. I emailed y'all the syllabus. If you didn't get the e the syllabus, email me. All right. Uh, I think the question was about Jacob having kids with four sisters. Yes. And that was by, who was that? Marlene, that was you, wasn't it? You asked the question last week. Did Jacob have children with four sisters? Were Leah and, and Rachel? Yes. All right. Let's answer that one right quick. Matter of fact, can we do it on the on the whiteboard? I think we can do it on. Can we? Can we? Let's do it on the whiteboard. All right. I don't want to miss nobody. Um. Uh, what is this? Uh, the problem with the pastor's burnout. A burnout. Hmm, what is this? I don't. I don't. I don't understand. What is this? The church gets hurt. To, what what is this? All right, let's go to the whiteboard. Uh, didn't came leave and go to another town, and there were people there already. I'm confused, Jackie Jackson. We keep looking at this as this happened over a couple months or something like that. Number two, Cain already had his wife. She, um, and then the Bible says he went to the, the land of Nod and then he had sex with her and they had a child. Okay. Let's go there as I do the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. All right. Are y'all seeing spam or what's going on? What's going on? What y'all see? Okay, thank you, T Y C Wig, Marie, Marshall. Thank you. I see you. Okay, I want to answer the question of Cain, and then I'll get to the other question. Um, I think it's in chapter what? Chapter. Four, yeah, chapter four. Mm -hmm. I just sent you the question by Marlene. Okay, yeah, that that was the wrong one you sent me. Yeah, that 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 picture was the wrong picture. The problem with she 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 says the problem with pastors burn. Yeah, you sent me the wrong one. Uh, um, chapter four. Let's read it. In fact, let's put the camera on it, and so that we could. See what it what it say, what it say. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he builded a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son. And Enoch was born. You see what's happening here? So y'all says there were people already there. Well, it looks like the son of Cain looked like they established those people. <laughs> if you see here. And again, this could have all this stuff happened over many, 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 many years. 
It's in the scriptures. Y'all come to class, <laughs> we, we won't have this problem if y'all come to class. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It does not give us all of the names of the children. Right. Whitley, Dr. Whitley, it's good to see you. Okay. All right, so y'all talking about, no, Jacob, not Cain. All right. Well, then let's get to that. I'm trying to get there. Donald, bless it to you. Thank you. I see, I see your email. Adam, I see your email. Okay. Let's get to the whiteboard. Can we? Okay, you resent it? Okay. Where is it? Right here. Zilpa. Uh, Zilpa was given to... Um, wait, first of all, Zilpah was given to, let's do this, Leah. Okay. Zilpah was given to Leah from Leah's daddy, Laban. All right. I might be, I think it, I, th I might be spelling it wrong. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. She was a concubine for Jacob. You understand? She gave birth to Gad and I believe Asher. These are two of the sons of the tribes of Israel. Mm hmm. What happened next? Then Laban gave Bilhah to Rachel. Why? As a wedding present. Okay? As a wedding present. She gave birth to Dan and Naphtali. Or Naphtali. How many children did Rachel have? Can somebody tell me? Hmm? 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 How many children did Rachel have? Can y'all tell me? Huh? <clears throat> uh, uh, did you note Enoch's name? Is he the same Enoch from the book of Enoch? He is not. All right. What are the two children that Rachel had? Because uh, uh, by this time, Enoch was already. Huh? What were their names? Uh, Rachel children's name. Can y'all tell me? Hmm? What were their names? All right. Somebody said Joseph. Mm hmm. And Benjamin. Okay. Rachel died after the birth of one of those. Which one? Hmm. Rachel died after the birth of which one? Can you tell me? I like to know Benjamin, somebody said. Mm-hmm. Benjamin. Okay. And his name was not Benjamin at first. What was his name at first? She called him what? Not Benjamin. What did she call him? Okay. She called him that name. Why? Yes. She died during Benjamin's birth. Yes. Benjamin. Yes. Thank you. Ben. No. Me. That's right. Uh, S Scott. <laughs> Scott. Y'all Bible studies over? Yes. Ben. No. Me. Well. M N. I. Sorry. Ben. No. Ni. Ben. No. Me. Okay. It means something, don't it? Uh-huh. Mm hmm. It means something, right? What does it mean? 
Mm hmm. Yep. And sometimes people do do that. Like that. Son of sorrow. Mm hmm. And somebody said, no, don't call him that. Son of my sorrow. Child of my suffering. Come on, Linda. Mm hmm. Child or son of the mo of my morning. Yes. I see you, Linda. Ivy, you finally in there. I <laughs> see your email. Okay. So. Uh, Bilha was given to Rachel as a wedding gift. Rachel had two children and uh, Jacob eventually gave uh, Bilha, Dan and Naphtali. The problem here is with Brother Reuben. Brother Reuben. What happened with Brother Reuben? And Bill Ha. Anybody know? <laughs> Come on, Tanya. The nurse said, don't call him that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What happened between Reuben and Bill Ha, y'all? Can y'all tell me? <laughs> Natalie said Reuben was fast. <laughs> you know, I love me a I, I love me a nice Reuben sandwich. That's right. He slept with Bill Ha. And um, Jacob, his father, discovered that, okay? And then he then um, proclaimed uh, a curse over Benjamin when he was blessing the children. So Jacob was blessing his children, and it was supposed to have been Reuben who was supposed to get the birthright. He missed it. And then, uh, who was it next? Is it Simeon was born? And um, I think it's Levi was born. And then Judah was born. Okay. And when, when Jacob was passing out the birthrights, he said, Reuben, you slept with my woman. <laughs> so you miss out. He said, Limian and Simeon uh, and, and Levi, <laughs> I can't say the name. What did they do? They lost too. Mm -hmm. What happened to them? It has everything to do with cutting some foreskins. <laughs> Can y'all tell me? <laughs> huh? Can y'all tell me what happened to them? Mm -hmm. Yes. Come on, Tre uh, Teresha. They killed a whole town. They took revenge for who? Mm -hmm. Yes. Unstable as water. Come on, Margaret. You better preach this. Circumcised the folks and killed them. All right. Who were they? And they did that for who? For whom? Hmm? Who they do it for? I like to know. I'll, yes, the, si the, the sister Dinah. Absolutely. Okay, the people of Shechem. All right. So what, what happened here to, I know it's taking me a long time to answer your question, but it was a great question. It, it gives us an, uh, a, an uh, opportunity to, again, uh, preach the gospel. <laughs> Here's what it does. Your question was, was Zilpah and Bilhar sisters? Or were they, were they half sisters of, of, of Leah and Rachel? We don't know. Um, Jewish scholars says that they were, but Zilpah is a mystery. Nobody know where she come from. And she doesn't speak. Okay, we don't know. But that doesn't mean they were not because we have the English Bible and we have the we have the Old Testament as what we know it. But the Jews have a little bit more and they have. We talked about the Mish, the Mishnah. Remember, we talked about the Mishnah a few weeks ago and we talked about the oral sayings of stories. Okay, 
So it could be possible that Bil Zilpah and Bilhah were the sisters, the half sisters. True, but we don't have that account in our scriptures today. So because Reuben lost his birthright, what happened was then Jacob gave his birthright to two boys. Can y'all tell me who those boys were? And they were not any of these sons. They were not any sons from Rachel or Leah or Zilpah or Bilhah. Who were they? Jacob gave the birthright to two boys. Who were they? And he grafted them into the army. Who were they? I like to know. Okay, y'all saying Joseph's boys. Right. What were their names? All right. Brownie Cat went over to, to YouTube. Okay, that's right. It was Manasseh. Sometimes his name is spelled a couple ways. That's right. And Ephraim. Okay. Who was the oldest? Who was the oldest? Because Jacob went to bless them and he did this. He crossed his hands to show Joseph, uh, to show Joseph a, a point here. All right? That goes into a whole nother teaching. Who was the oldest and but who was supposed to be mightier? Hmm. All right. Y'all say Ephraim was the oldest. Mm hmm. Ephraim and then Manasseh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Somebody said Manasseh was the oldest. Which one y'all? <laughs> I'd like to know. Because y'all give me two answers. All right, Cecilia said Manasseh. All right, see why we need Bible study? <laughs> Y'all see why we need Bible study? Oh, man. Uh, you, let's see. No. Uh, uh, oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's way, it's, it's way. All right, Joe. Mm, mm, mm. I guess I, w I wasn't ready. Yeah, there you go. Go to uh, Genesis chapter 48. Mm -hmm. Chapter 48. Mm -hmm. No, so uh, for this is the firstborn. Uh, and when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim. Okay. Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand. This is verse 17. Genesis 48 and 17. He held his hand to the young one. All right. Y'all understand? He says, no. Manasseh is the oldest. That's the one get the blessing. And, J and Jacob said, I know what I'm doing, boy. I know what I'm doing. Okay. So that answers your question. And again, your question gave us an opportunity to really e explore this a little deeper. It's a great lesson. I mean, you, you could talk about the Joseph, Jacob, Leah, Rachel story for years and never get tired of it. All right. Hope that answers your question. The question, I mean, the answer is we don't know. It could be that they are related. It's just that. The English Bible on uh, what we have canonized do not tell us uh, that that answer is correct. Uh, my cash app. How can I send you uh, my cash app acting? Oh, uh, Dolores, uh, you can in the description below. Um, all my videos are, are ways to give in the description below are all ways to give. Uh, and on all of my videos on my channel, okay, except for this one because I'm still on it. <laughs> when it when it's over, I'll put all that stuff under this video. Blessings to you, Delos. By the way, um, okay. Further, let's let's continue this and and close it down because I'm getting close to that time. Um, 
when we seek understanding of the Bible for the same reason a driver seeks to understand traffic signals. The Bible gives us guidance through life, showing us the road of safety and wisdom. The rules of the road. Can y'all tell me? Blessed to you, Super Chat. Tanya, thank you for that. Can y'all tell me, why is it important to understand the rules of the road? Hmm? And then tie that with your understanding of, of the scriptures. It's important to follow the rules of an engagement, the rules of the road. There's a stop sign coming up. You might want to stop. And in my neighborhood, they don't stop at stop signs. And uh, today I was leaving my house, getting ready to pull out. My, my house is right at a stop sign. And as I'm pulling close to the stop sign, cars are going woof, woof, woof. There's a stop sign right there. There are four stop signs. And they don't stop. Well, there's two. There's one, two, uh, three, because this is a one way. They won't stop. And, I'm, I'm, and, I, and I said to myself one day. I pray that this don't happen, but a child is going to walk across that street and somebody's going to end his life. And that almost happened to me last summer. I had my headphones on, which is, can be dangerous. It shouldn't be when you got your eyes and you can see, but I had my headphones on and I was preoccupied. Okay. And I'm walking across the street. In front of my house, I'm walking across the street with my head down and a car is coming. And she does, she gets right close to me. And <laughs> now the stop sign is right here and I'm walking. And that car passed the stop sign. And then I look up just in enough time and I stop. And she <laughs> right in front of me. And I looked in her face. She had her face in her phone driving like this. I could have lost my life. You could lose your life if you don't follow the rules of the road. Need a tragic signal light there. Yeah, socket. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Tresca, Tresca, you something else. When people do rolling stops and turn or uh, when they aren't supposed to, etc., it is very selfish. Almost got, yeah, come on, Black Panther, so you understand. It happens every day, Sheila. Yes. All right. Uh, let's see. We understand, the, of the, uh, we seek understanding of the Bible for the same reason someone in the path of a storm seeks to understand the weather report. The Bible predicts what the end times will be like, sounding a clear warning of impending judgment. Matthew 24 and chapter 25. And how to avoid it. The path of a storm. Okay? How to avoid it. And all of you should be Oh, let me do this. Let me do ooh, this. Okay. As it pertains to watching the news, first of all, all of you should be watching the news, but you don't like it. You don't like it. You don't, you hate the news because y'all say it's bad. Oh, it's just depressing. So you didn't understand what Putin was doing. You didn't understand why he wanted Ukraine. You just, you just don't like it. You just don't want to watch it. So you are unaware of what's going on around you to the point where you don't know what news mean can somebody tell me what does n-e-w-s mean hmm can you tell me <laughs> because some of you will not be surprised and some of you will be surprised number one you some of you many of you up in age don't know what n-e-w-s even mean it actually spells out something what does it spell out? Hmm? It spells out news, but it's a it's an acronym. <laughs> huh? 
Can somebody tell me? Except <laughs> Delisa said, not easy watching stuff. <laughs> See? Joe don't know. Yes. Many of you don't even know. North. <laughs> East. West. South. That's what the news mean. And most of you didn't know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what it means. <laughs> and that's what we were we were told to, to it, it's the easiest way to understand it. Now I know y'all when we were young, it meant notable events, something weather or something reports is that right? okay but it meant north east west south <laughs> that's what it mean they had to come up with an acronym so that y'all can understand it better that's why y'all putting up uh the, the the google name notable events weather and for and sports no it's north east west and south i learned that in grammar school <laughs> all right <laughs> nope, this is what it means. They had to come up with the other four that y'all putting in the comment section. <laughs> Joe jo said, that's so stupid. <laughs> okay, now, watch this though. When you watch the news, you who are believers, uh, there are two types. <laughs> Amber, you crazy. There, there are... There's the anchor man. There is the sports anchor. There is the weather man. Or what we may call the meaty, meaty, your ologist. <laughs> Something like that. He's a meteorologist. Okay, can y'all tell me which one of these should you be as a missionary or an evangelist of the world, trying to win the world? Which one of these should you be? Hmm? Hmm? Which one? I like to know. You can answer this tomorrow since we're so close to ending. What does it mean when it says Paul's gospel? Trust could be doing Trust could boy, you be throwing some stuff at me. Alright. Okay. Uh-huh. Sheila said anchor. Okay, why you want to be the anchor? Yvonne why, TJ, why would you want to be the anchor? For what? Hmm? Because what is the job of the anchor man? Hmm? Can y'all tell me what is the job of the anchor man? Trinice? Hmm? What is the job of the anchor man? Hmm? The anchor man does what? Report the news, but he can only report what has happened. And what is happening? You understand? He can only tell you past and present. That's it. He can't tell you what Putin going to do tomorrow. Bless it to you, Taylor. Thank you so much for Super Chat. He delivers the news by what he already know. He cannot tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. He, all right. The sportsman does the same thing. He only tells you the scores of yesteryear and he's telling you what the score is right now. He can't tell you who's going to win the Super Bowl tomorrow. Mm hmm. Current events sets the stage. Mm hmm. But the weather man, it's raining, man can tell you what the weather was last night, yesterday, 40, 50 years ago. He can tell you the past. He can tell you the present. And he can definitely tell you 
the future. Mm, mm, mm. All of you should be weathermen and women. You should be meteorologists. <laughs> Predictions. You're supposed to be able to predict what's going on tomorrow. And that's why we got this word eschatology. It is the weather report of end time. We know detail by detail what's going to happen all the way from now until the world ends and burn up and, and get renewed. Mm -hmm. We are, And Jesus says you look up and you can tell that it's going to be fair weather or it's going to rain tomorrow, but you can't tell this. He says, y'all are horrible weathermen. Yes. That's what you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Come on. And the weather person, watch this. Like some anchors are called roving reporters. They are on location. Whenever a hurricane or a tsunami or whatever uh, comes, bless it to you, Dolores, Whenever some type of hurricane or a, uh, a he knows because he's got what's called a Doppler in the air. It's a Doppler radar. Doppler. All right. The invent in I was supposed to brought up Doppler yesterday. He put a, a thing in the sky and that thing can read six days from now what the weather is going to be. And when it gets close, this weatherman steps outside of his church and he goes on location. He is a streetwalker. He is an evangelist. And he stands there with a microphone. Let me tell you all what's happening. The wind is coming from the west. And, and I, I want everybody to know, don't come to this place. <laughs> He's a roving reporter. That's who we supposed to be. Jesus said, go into the highways and the byways and be a roving reporter to compel them. A watchman on the wall. And don't let that weatherman pull out the farmer's <laughs> almanac. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Y'all, it's something else. So y'all supposed to be north, east, west, and south saints. That's what you're supposed to be. So get on your job. It's, it's important. It's important. I know y'all want to be notable events, weather, and sports. No, I need y'all to be north, east, west, and southerners. Okay. Mm. It's crazy. It's crazy in here. All right. I see you, CC Johnson. I see your homework. Uh, Sharina, I see you. Shula, I see your homework. Carol Humphrey. All right. Nelson, Bible study. I see you. Homework's coming in. Amen. And I think. And my, uh, did I read the, I got two more, I think. We seek understanding of the Bible for the same reason an avid reader seeks to understand his favorite author's books. The Bible reveals to us the person and glory of God as expressed in his son, Jesus Christ, John 1. The more we read and understand the Bible, the more intimate we know of the author. Oh. I'm telling y'all, this one right here, I can't go into that detail because that one, I have to save, save that one for week number seven. Because when you're reading the letter from the author, you get this closeness to the author by the, the style of his penmanship, his literary work. He put this painstaking, he took this time out 
He sacrificed all this stuff. Uh, and he wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote from his heart to express his love for you. All right. Took him a long time to write it so you can sit there and just one moment and read it. And how he writes it causes the reader to get deep into the pages and fall even further and deeper in love with the author. Oh, my God. Oh, Oh, George. Oh, oh Mary. Oh. <laughs> of course, the guy, the woman who said, oh, Mary, I should have been a man. Oh, Mary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got to change my voices up. I, I, I get a little, a little tossed. Okay. As I'm telling y'all, this is what this is what it's all about. Lastly. As Philip was traveling to Gaza, the Holy Spirit led him to a man who was reading a portion of Isaiah. And Philip approached the man, saw what he was reading, and asked this very important question. Do you understand what you are reading? Mm. Acts chapter 8 and 30. Philip knew that understanding was the starting point. For faith, you must understand. Without understanding the, the Bible, we cannot apply it or obey it or believe it. Mm. Mm. That's going to have to be my notes for this for next week, Wednesday's class, y'all. Mm. I was getting ready to say it on here, but I'm not going to say it right here because that's going to be on the test. <laughs> I got I to gotta write it. Because uh, mm, 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 if I if I mouth it, y'all, some of y'all can understand my lips. Just the question for next Wednesday. Mm, 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 <laughs> okay, I have to write it, or I'll forget it. Uh, this was Philip. Okay. Uh mm -hmm. Philip's question. Uh, and then I'm gonna put. Oh, that's going to be a good one, y'all. You don't want to miss next week. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. Um, yeah, Dinah's giving y'all the homework. For those of you who just got in late, Rogers and, and um, Truth Reigns gave it earlier for those who are here on time. <laughs> okay. All right, Jane Ford, I see your homework. P praise God. Woo, man, I'm going to burn the midnight oil. No, I ain't because I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, grade y'all's papers tomorrow morning when I wake up. But there's a couple of you who need the syllabus, so I'll, I'll send the syllabus out tonight for those who didn't get it. All right, this is some good stuff. You teaching? Come on, Nada. No, I get I get I get tongue tied when I say a name. She know why. Not a name, died. Yeah, yeah, Jones. Cognition in moderation. J Red, man, come on, save some of that hot stuff for next week. Thank you, Jackie Joseph. I'm sorry, Jackie Jackson. I, my friend's name is Jackie Joseph. Uh, uh, you be in Dubai next week, Verlinda? How you going to leave us? How How is Verlinda going to leave us and go to Dubai? Hmm? Well, Dubai then. <laughs> How you going to leave us like this? We need you next week. Can you tell your boss to call me? Tell, tell him to call me right now. You needed Troy? All right. Troy. Uh, uh. Troy, do me a favor. Send me another email. Tell me that you need that. That you need the syllabus. No, you don't. Tro Troy Alfred, I see you right here. I'm getting ready to send it to you right now. And I want you to tell me if you got it. All right. <clears throat> Copy. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hold on. I said hold on. <laughs> Hold on, y'all play too much. All right. Okay, Troy, I just sent it to you. Check thou email. I need the syllabus too. What is your email? Tanya, what time you come in here? Hmm, Tanya. Hmm. Hmm. What time you come in here? Hmm. 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 And what what what, what I've been saying for this whole show, huh? Huh, Tanya? Huh. Huh. <laughs> 
Gifted friends number one at gmail.com. Gifted friends the number one. Gmail.com. Okay. Amen, Troy. Thank you. You received it? Okay, good. All right. Uh <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I gotta go, y'all. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go eat something. Oh, you've been here for 20 minutes? Oh, okay. I'm going to let you slide in, Tanya. I'm going to let you slide. All right, send me an email and I'll send you whatever you need. Okay? Yes, Colette. I, I'm, if, you, if you sent me an email at any time today, I don't forget. So, don't worry. If you didn't get, if you didn't get your email today, you're going to get it because I put y'all in a folder. Remember that guy who said a folder full of women? Who was that? This was during the time Barack Obama was running, maybe on a folder, a, a, a binder. He said a binder full of, full of women. Joe Manchin? Was that his name? It, it was hilarious. This is my 14th, my what? My fourth week watching you? I, oh, oh, okay, what? Well, then you, 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 you a bunker. You've been a bunker for four, 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 four weeks. I'm glad you're here. Send me an email, please, and let me know. Uh, what is it that you need? Put Bunker family in the subject line. God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the people who are here. I thank you. 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 All of the people who are here. I love them so much. And I feel that they love me too. Help us in the word. It's not as hard as we make it. It's a love letter. Oh, how sweet it is. <laughs> Thank you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Was it Mitt Romney? Uh, he did say that when he was uh, battling Obama in one of those thingy thingies. Was that Mitt a folder full of women or something. All right, y'all. Take care of yourselves and one another. We'll see you tomorrow for, what is it, questions and answers, all right? You got any questions? Let's talk tomorrow, 9 p.m. Central. We'll answer all the questions. Hold up. Uh, okay, I got some more questions, but I'll save them for tomorrow. Somebody asked me about witchcraft or something like that. Blessing to you, Melody. Thank you. Nancy Johnson have a prayer request, y'all, for the 200 of y'all that are still here. Nancy Johnson have a prayer request. Can we call out Nancy Johnson's name tonight? Had an ultrasound done a couple of weeks ago because she was having pain in her stomach, in upper stomach area. Or upper stomach, she says. The doctor's office called and gave the results that her liver had enlarged. Can we pray for Nancy Johnson tonight? I'm not in any pain, but the pain only happens in the morning while I was sitting in bed. Pray in agreement with me that I will return, that it will return to normal. All right. Nancy Johnson, she's a part of us. Let's pray for her. Uh, she also wants to refinance her home. And, and she needs a raise on her job. Okay. Um, so let's pray for her healing. That the Lord will regulate that organ. Amen. That liver. Put it back the way it's supposed to be. Amen. They are, they are sending their prayers here. Nancy, a whole bunch of them are sending their prayers in the comment section on YouTube and Facebook. All right. We're praying for you and agree in the name of Jesus. Complete recovery according to his will. Amen. Jane Ford is praying. Eleanor is praying. The actress is praying. Amen. Jay Red is praying. Socket is praying. Jane Ford is praying. Amen. YouTube Baptist is praying. Amen. Angela Fraser is praying. Tanya uh, Parrott is praying. Michelle Carter is praying for you. Nancy Johnson is people. 
indeed care. Amen. They're standing in the gap. All right. Archer is praying. Timothy Johnson is praying. Truth Reigns is praying. And the prayers will continue all through the night for you. That's how important you are to us. Beverly Williams is praying. Dinah is praying. Praise God. Amen. Nicole Williams is praying. Deborah Brown is praying. Valinda Nelson is praying. Amen. Bree Arnold Norman is praying. And Jackie Jackson is praying. Amen. Diane Sims is praying. Ooh, y'all gonna y'all, y'all gonna y'all doing something here. Practical evangelism is praying. The music company LLC is praying. Ooh, wee! My God, today Ruth Collins is praying. Man, wow! I tell you, I tell you, y'all gonna y'all gonna y'all gonna see some tears in my eyes. I gotta go. <laughs> I love y'all. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Sir Walter Jones Show. Goodbye.